We are talking about demons and devils and how to make them more interesting in your campaign, and today we're talking about the Sago. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody to Dungeon Brew. I'm excited to talk about Visago today, primarily because there's not a lot of information out there on this particular demon slash devil. In looking through like Dungeons and Dragons or Forgotten Realms lore, he's not really mentioned unless you start kind of stretching your wings and looking into homebrewed content for this particular being. And I think the reason behind this is because there's not a lot of historical or occult history around Visago himself. Um, we do find him mentioned in the Lesser Key of Solomon as well as the Book of the Office of Spirits, but beyond those two texts, when we look at the other grimoires that have been mentioned in previous videos in this series, he's just not mentioned there. He, he's not discussed. And there's some reasons behind this which we can kind of delve into, um, or some speculation as to why this is the way that it is, but it means that you have the opportunity to be very creative in your presentation of the Sago. So I do want to give you the description of how he's described in the, the couple of references that we have. It is said that Vasago is a mighty prince, being of the same nature as Agaris, he is called Visago. This spirit is of a good nature, and his office is to declare things past and to come, and to discover all things hid or lost. He governeth 26 legions of spirits, and this is his seal. Now, the real interesting piece of this text is that it says that he has uh, the same nature as a Garrus, and we can... Um, again, speculate on what that means exactly. Early depictions of a Sago were very similar to Agaris. If you remember, Agaris uh, was sitting upon a crocodile. He was an old man and he had a hawk that he carried with him. The Sago is almost identical except for the fact that he carries an hourglass instead of a hawk. And this is probably representative of his ability to see into the future or into the past, which is uh, something that we'll talk about in a minute for how you can employ that in your TTRPG. The other thing that it may be in reference to in terms of like having the same nature as Agaris is that if you remember, Agaris was said to have been a fallen angel. He was once part of the angelic realm and that he was part of some councils and he was good-natured, and it is said that Visago also was a part of the heavenly realm and he fell. But unlike Agaris, in his falling, Visago still is considered to be benevolent, um, to be good-natured. In fact, when summoning him, it's said that he doesn't ask for anything in return. He will help witches and soothsayers and fortune tellers gain information or teach them how to utilize their craft in a way that works for them without asking for anything in return. But here's the rub. Is he really as benevolent as they say? If you remember, a couple of minutes ago, I said that he had been omitted from some of the other grimoires that we've talked about in this series. He wasn't referenced along with the other demons and devils because he wasn't perceived to be as evil as them. He was considered to be good-natured and benevolent, and so he wasn't categorized with all of these evil spirits that could impact mankind. But the question has come up, is he really that good-natured? Could it be so true that he asks for nothing in his contract of providing you with gifts of finding things that are hidden or lost or helping you look into the future or the past because he enjoys, he, he finds joy in leading individuals wayward, leading them astray, down a dark path, away from uh, the light, away from a higher being, away from enlightenment in some way. And that's why he doesn't ask for anything in return. Uh, this, this leads us into how you can utilize this in your TTRPG campaign. What quests could you develop around a demon like Asago? How could you introduce him into your campaign? Maybe he's pretending to be a godlike figure in a village where he's providing people with all these gifts, asking for nothing back, and they worship him and see him as being good, but you recognize what evil he's actually imparting upon them. Uh, maybe your players have to seek him out, actually, and 
ask for his gifts to be bestowed upon them so that they can find a lost artifact to defeat someone or maybe a lost person they're trying to hunt down. So there's a lot of different ways that you could introduce him. And again, you can be creative with him in so many ways that I don't think I've really been touched on um, in a TTRPG before because of the nature of what this demon is. So explore. Let me know how you would utilize this demon slash devil in your own campaign. That's what we have today here on Dungeon Brew. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you again next time. Dungeon Brew.